Mom, I can't believe you are making me do this. I have rights as a teenager, you know. It's not always about you and your house and possessions, he couldn't believe it. Toya sat in the back seat of his mother's SUV, arms folded and ears flattened against his head. Every wolf had his dignity, especially him. Having it stripped was almost like telling him to stop breathing. Toya, I don't care, his mother protested. That is the fourth party you had in our house. This one was during the day. Either you're trying too hard, or you're just an idiot. Your friends destroy everything in the house, then jet out the back door when they hear the car pull up, and you expect me to believe a subtle excuse like I fell. Not happening, sweetheart. Besides, I think a little socialization in a different environment will be good for you. But, Toya wouldn't hear it. Even his mother heard him turn his iPod's music all the way up, so she couldn't be heard over one of his killer's albums. So what if Toya had parties? He was a party animal, or so he thought. Friends had always come easily for him, and what was better than to get all your friends together and, oh say, break a few vases? But, Toya's ambitions for parties were slowly dying away as he gazed out the window and up at the cloudy afternoon sky, watching the clouds pass and the trees zoom by as his mother pressed onward. Toya was a simplistic wolf his fur was mostly gray, save for a simple black star under his right eye and his bleached white ears. His mother had always told him that's what made him special, but he'd always thought the random five-pointed star on his face would draw more of a crowd than a discoloration. He always seemed to wear clothing that matched his color scheme, as well. For instance, he was simply wearing a pair of gray jeans and a white t-shirt. It seemed much easier to match and coordinate these basic colors rather than delve into a rainbow, like most other kids his age would do. The only color that set him off his monochromatic style was a bright yellow the color of his eyes. But, none of that mattered to him now. He sighed as his vision was drawn to the plaza in the distance. He knew where his mother was talking to him she'd even told him she'd take him here before if he misbehaved Applefield daycare. In a matter of minutes, they'd parked, and both mother and son were inside, scanning the environment that Toya'd be stuck in for the next six hours of his miserable life. It was a lot larger inside than either of them had first expected huge, in fact. There were plenty of games and activities going around the whole place, and dozens of others, both cubs, and teens, playing and having fun. Toya's mother smiled and looked down at him. I think you'll have a good time here. After a few steps inside, Toya noticed the lady to his right a large brown bear sitting at a reception desk, obviously playing solitaire on her computer. He padded up to her, then gazed over into one of the far corners, more distracted by what appeared to be a huge big screen TV on which some of the other teenage furs were playing. From here, it looked like the new Super Smash Brothers, one of Toya's specialties. But, as he began to walk away. Ahem. The brown bear cleared her throat and looked up at Toya from behind her desk, obviously more angry that he disturbed her solitaire game than anything else. Sign your name. You'll check it off when you leave. And with that, she pushed a pen and a notepad towards him, nearly shoving it off her desk and onto the floor. Wow. Okay, then, Toya responded, making sure to be as sarcastic as possible. But, hell, if he could go over and show some armatures how to lose at Brawl. A few grumpy teenagers later formed their own poker game, far away from Toya and his winning streak. A happy Toya sat on a chair, not too far away from the big screen and continued to play against a few poor saps, his tail wagging furiously from his intense concentration and adrenaline rush. This game's winner is... Wolf. Ha ha. Toya jumped out of the chair and struck yet another victory pose, smiling, and holding his controller with pride. An angry cheetah slammed his controller against the carpeted floor and a saddened border collie slumped over in his seat, staring at the floor. Guys up for another rematch. Toya boasted, but as he turned to face his competition, he noticed a long line of toddlers forming across the center of the facility. A bunch of tiny kids were all lined up, some of them still clutching onto stuffed animals or other toys as they stepped into what looked like public restrooms. What's going on there? The border collie was the first to respond, staring at the line himself. Ha. Huh. I remember that line from when I was a pup. It's the check line. It's for all the little kids who are wearing diapers or trainers. Yeah no, cause little kids don't know when they dash but Toya cut him off. Yeah yeah. I get it. He watched for a minute as cub after cub walking into the private rooms and came out, some of them running back towards their play areas and some standing outside, waiting for friends to be finished with their changes. What a life. Hey, but, what about that rematch? Only after two more matches, both the cheetah and Kali left the game corner, leaving the king of games Toya to gloat in privacy. Hmm. One more game. He called out, but he knew they were finished playing with someone way out of their league. His eyes instead turned towards the rest of the floor the other games and stuff other kids were playing with. And, from his chair in the corner, he saw no. It couldn't be. Was that, a tub of Legos? No way. He hadn't played with those in years. He got up from his chair and rushed over towards the tub, getting onto his knees and peering inside, his tail wagging like mad again and his ears perked up from his intense curiosity. There had to be thousands of them. It was his dream, come true. He looked around, not seeing anyone else interested in taking this glorious moment away from him, and, even though he felt like more of a little kid than anything, he kicked over the box and spilled the contents into a large pile on the floor. After all, how was he supposed to find the right pieces for building if he didn't see them all? He must have sat there for hours, snapping block after block together. Brick on brick, piece by piece, he constructed a miniature castle, complete with turrets and tiny Lego flags. Then, 
He decided that was stupid and smashed it, loving the destruction way more than the construction. He smiled as the bricks scattered everywhere he definitely felt more like a little kid now. Or even like a baby. It was a comfortable feeling to him, a wondrous feeling of being able to cause mayhem and destruction and not have to clean it up and know that his mother wouldn't get upset from his misbehavior. He giggled as he stood up, and then froze for a split second. Oh no. Why was his crotch so warm? He looked down at his bright orange shirt and jean shorts. No. He wasn't drinking anything, but did that mean? Suddenly, Toya heard a tiny bell ring over by the potty area. The brown bear from the front desk was standing over a bunch of other little kids as they got in line for checkup time. Had that much time already passed? Toya shrugged and sat back down to his Legos he didn't need no stupid changes. He was a big boy and big boys never needed changes. Like all the big kids in the corner those kids were super cool and big. Toya was sure he could hang out with them if he really wanted to and not all these babies. He wondered maybe if they'd even play Legos with him. But, as he got back up to go check, the warmness at his front hit him again. He blushed, twisting his muzzle into an embarrassed frown. Aw oh man. Huffing, Toya stomped into line with some of the other kids. He stood behind a tiny girl fox who looked like she could barely stand. She was still holding a tiny teddy bear from over in the kitty corner in one paw, while her other paw was stuck in her muzzle. Babies, Toya though, rolling his eyes. Soon enough, she was led into one of the rooms, leaving Toya standing at the head of the line, waiting. Hi there, Wolfie. One of the staff workers, a brown coyote, led a panther toddler from the room and sent him off to go play with his friends, then grabbed Toya's paw and gently led him in for his quick check. The room was just as Toya had expected a simple public restroom with stalls and urinals for all that weird potty stuff. His mom had helped him with the big boy potty before but he never learned how to work those other things. They looked like big bowls that someone had glued to the wall. Toya couldn't help but stifle a laugh as he walked by them they always looked so funny. What are you laughing at, silly guy? The coyote smiled and poked his nose, bending down to his level. Now I'm just gonna check your pants really quick to see if you need a change, okay lil guy? Toya gave a tiny nod and received a nice warm pat on the head from the nice coyote, before his digit poked into this wastelene and he pulled his back, giving him a sniff. Oh woofy. Oh no, Toya thought. He didn't wet, did he? His ears flattened against his head and his tail curled between his legs, whimpering up at the coyote. Don't worry, buddy. Let's get you fixed up right away, huh? He lifted Toya up onto a changing table nearby and laid him down, stripping him of his pants and soaked trainers. Toya knew mommy would be kinda upset that he piddled in his trainers again she promised him undies if he could make it a whole week. He didn't even make it one day. He started to whimper and cry a little more, but the coyote walked back over. Oh, buddy, don't cry. SHH SHH, it's okay, he pat Toya's exposed tummy and head calming the little wolf down with his warm touch. There now, it's okay. Toya breathed easily again, letting his guard down as he lay half-naked on the changing table. This had to be a nice safe place he was gonna be okay. Maybe mommy would never have to know. He could still get his undies in a week like a big boy. The coyote smiled and reached under the changing table, picking up a bottle of baby powder and a thick baby diaper, quickly spreading the wings out and powdering it, sliding it under the baby wolf and sliding his tail through the hole in the back before taping it up. There we go, big boy. All nice and comfortable again. The coyote began to refasten the straps on Toya's onesie as the tiny wolf looked up at him, beyond confused. Toya blinked a little, for some reason, his diaper didn't feel as nice and safe as it usually did. He knew it was on right, he smelled the powder and it felt just, right. But somehow it didn't. He was unsure and confused. And those things on the wall, the funny looking things. He knew what those were, didn't he? He was sure he remembered. No. No, he didn't know. He'd never even seen those things before. They just looked so, out of place and weird. Lil Wolfie Pup. Time to go back out and play. The nice coyote had re-snapped his bright blue onesie and lifted him up. For some reason, his warm, fuzzy arms didn't seem as comforting as they usually were. He struggled and fussed, trying to tell the coyote that he was uncomfortable, but for some reason, he just couldn't say it. He knew he was uncomfortable. But how was he supposed to tell him? Wasn't his fussing enough to let him know? What's the matter little guy? You're being awfully uncooperative tonight. Are you sleepy? The coyote said, walking Toyo back out into the now seeming endless room. He walked Toya over into one of the corners that was blocked off by a three-foot-high fence, keeping wayward cubs from exploring the large floor and getting hurt by any of the bigger kids. He sat Toya down on his thickly diapered butt, the tiny poof of his tail waggling from finally being set down. With one last smile and nose poke, the coyote popped a tiny pacifier in the wolf's muzzle and attached a clip to it, clipping it to the top of his onesie. Play nice, little guy. Nap time is in a little while. He smiled and went back to a long line of kids, who seemed to be standing far far away from the playpen. Even though he wasn't being held anymore. Toya felt really weird. If it wasn't his diapers or his onesie, well, what else was there? He sat for a few minutes, suckling on the pacifier in his muzzle, utterly confused about literally everything around him. He didn't even know what to compare his situation to it was all just a big blur to him. He looked down towards the floor and noticed something strange and fuzzy that seemed to be laying there since he was set down. It looked like a big gray club with four tiny branches growing out of the end. Though, the little branches were tiny barely even stub bless. He reached out to touch the meep. He giggled that tickled. Were these things he was touching called? 
Feats? That's what they must be. And if they felt good to touch. Soon enough, Toya's muzzle is wrapped around his foot, his tiny tail wagging happily at the sensation of his own toothless muzzle on his ticklish, sensitive baby feet. In fact, he discovered that almost everything on him felt a hundred times more ticklish than ever. Even when he tried to suckle on his paw, he noticed it felt wonderful on his toothless gums in his muzzle. His tail must have never stopped wagging from the moment he sat down, until the few seconds it suddenly stopped and lifted, then went back to wagging. What seemed like mere minutes passed by as Toya lay on the plush floor. Soon enough, a familiar sound reached his ears and he rolled over onto his back, seeing his mommy looking down at him. Her muzzle opened, making Toya giggle. She was talking words at him, something he had yet to even begin to understand. They meant something, but Toya was much happier just kicking and wiggling around. That's how he showed he was happy to see her. Except this time, when he wiggled, something uncomfortable and sticky seemed to stick to his butt. Toya's mother looked down on the helpless little baby Wolfie, gently smiling. The tiny wolf seemed to wiggle around, his face was contorted into a little concentrated frown. She knew what that meant. Still smiling, she reached down and lifted the tiny wolf up, giving him more space to finish his business. And, as she lifted him, she heard him pass the remainder of his messy load into his diaper. Feeling empty and satisfied, the tiny wolf pup looked up at his mommy, his cheeks, now full of his baby fat, keeping his eyes nearly halfway closed. That's my good little boy, all empty and happy. She cradled the tiny wolf as he gave a big yawn, as if he was letting go of all his duties and responsibilities, his exhaustion, and fatigue. He cuddled close to her as she walked with him, gently rocking him as the former 19-year-old turned into a two-month-old slowly lost his consciousness and intelligence, becoming nothing more than his bare appearance would force anyone to assume. So was this life now the end?